Shedbates here. Welcome back to the final installment in this little vegetable series. Today we're going to go over the final category of vegetable, the stem vegetable. Then briefly hit on some vegetable factoids like purchasing and cleaning and whatnot. Don't worry, it'll be quick and it will be a good time, I promise. So what is a stem vegetable anyway? Recall that veggies are classified based on what part of the plant you're going to eat. Stem vegetables include all the plants where what we're eating is the, well, the stem. Uh, that's asparagus, celery, artichokes, and mushrooms. First up for the stem vegetables, we got asparagus, which can be green, white, purple. It has tender stalks and tips. The thicker the stalk, the older and more woody the stem. Uh, asparagus can be steamed, it can be roasted, it can be sautéed. When you're buying, choose asparagus with... <laughs> I hate saying this. <laughs> when you're buying, choose asparagus with dry, tight tips and avoid limp or wilted stalks. <sighs> I can hear them snickering. So what's up with all these different colors? Asparagus comes in three forms, right? Green, the one you know, uh, white and purple. White asparagus is grown in a dark environment, either underground or well covered. Uh, covering the asparagus while it's growing prevents it from producing chlorophyll, the naturally occurring chemical that turns vegetables green, right? Uh, green and white are basically the same plant, just grown differently. Purple asparagus, on the other hand, gets its color from anthocyanin. Remember back like three videos ago, anthocyanin, the pigment and the antioxidant that's found in berries and red cabbage and red onions? It has a slightly different taste, purple asparagus does, uh, a little sweeter, a little more mild, and has a higher nutritional content than green and white brothers, but trust me, it tastes so good. Artichokes are the immature flowers of the thistle plant. That's a thistle, and if you pick it before it has a chance to flower, that is an artichoke. Uh, young, tender artichokes are called globe artichokes, like this one, and you can cook it whole. Quality artichokes will have tightly closed outer leaves and be a medium to dark green in color. They should not be soft when you squeeze them. So, how do you cook these guys? Before cooking and serving a mature artichoke, it is necessary to remove the choke, the fuzzy center. That's what's in the center. It's called the choke. Whole artichokes can be simmered, steamed, or microwaved like you already saw. Often they're served with lemon juice, and garlic butter, maybe a little hollandaise sauce. The artichoke heart itself can be cooked separately and served in salads or as a side dish. You can even find all artichoke hearts marinated in olive oil, already bottled and ready to go on your salad. Mmm, I'm hungry. That looks good. On a separate track, we got celery. Celery, obviously, we're eating the stem. Celery stalks are commonly used in salads and soups and stews. The cut stalk can also be served as crudité with a vegetable dip. Celery is a fundamental ingredient in mirepoix, like carrot and onion. Choose straight, rigid stalks with fresh leaves. Avoid pithy, woody, or limp celery stalks, please. And just like leeks, it is important to peel each stalk away from the bunch and wash down the center ridge where dirt and sand uh, hides. It gets gritty in there. Mushrooms belong to the fungi family, absolutely. But they also are part of the stem family of vegetables. Fungi are this large group of plants that uh, range from a single cell organism to giant monstrous mushrooms. The flavor of mushrooms ranges from delicate and fruity to pungent and garlicky. Mushrooms come in many sizes, shapes, colors. They are served raw in salads and are used in a variety of sauces, soups, and other recipes. Mushrooms are amazingly versatile. Uh, when you're buying, choose mushrooms that are clean and well-shaped. Avoid mushrooms with dirt in spots. When it comes to examples, we've got a lot. We've got your button mushroom, your morel mushroom, your cremini mushroom. That's a cremini. Portabella, those are the giant ones. Uh, truffles, oh, those are the big dark ones. And shiitake mushrooms. Uh, that right there is a truffle. Hard to believe it's so expensive, isn't it? That's one of the most expensive foods you can eat. These are the basics you should know about vegetables. How they're produced, purchased, cleaned, and stored. We've gone through all the, all the different families. We're done talking about the individuals. Now we're just going to briefly go over some of the basics, the fundamentals we haven't really covered yet. I'm going to briefly touch on each topic and how they are applied to vegetable cookery, if they are. 
Obviously, there's a lot more to know than I'll be able to teach you in this short little video, but it's a good place to start, I think. Hopefully. Let's start with buying. Improved shipping methods and new ways of farming have made most produce available all year. The use of hydroponic farming is popular. In hydroponic farming, vegetables are grown indoors year-round under regulated temperatures and light and nutrient-enriched water. To reduce costs and promote freshness, some restaurants grow their own fresh vegetables on the premises. Some vegetables, such as spinach, potatoes, and broccoli, are available all year. The quality, degree of ripeness, and price vary with season. Others, such as asparagus, summer squash, tomatoes, green beans, they have a specific growing season. Knowing the growing season for a particular vegetable is important. As with fruit, during the growing season, vegetables are plentiful. The quality is higher. The prices are usually lower. Some operations have seasonal menus that are based on what's fresh and locally available, like Seasons 52. Many guests today have shown an interest in eating local produce and supporting the restaurants that serve it. So how good is that vegetable you just bought? Well, check with the USDA. They use the same quality grades for vegetables that they use for fruit. Fresh vegetables are graded before shipping. And USDA grades from highest to lowest are U.S. Extra Fancy, U.S. Fancy, U.S. Fancy Number 1, U.S. Number 2, and U.S. Number 3. Canned products rated U.S. Grade A Fancy have the highest quality among canned goods. Fun to know. Good to know. Don't know that it matters, but now you know it. All produce that you buy has to be properly stored. Roots and tubers should be stored dry and unpeeled in a cool, dark area. Many of the other ripe vegetables can be stored in the fridge at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, but not all will be stored at these temperatures. For example, potatoes should never be stored in the refrigerator because the low temperature of a refrigerator converts starches into sugars. They should be stored in a cool, dark place. Uh, remember, if possible, vegetables should be stored separately in one refrigerator and fruit in another refrigerator. As with some fruit, certain vegetables emit ethylene gas, which causes fruit to ripen. Most vegetables need to be kept dry because excess moisture causes produce to spoil quickly. For this reason, produce shouldn't be peeled, washed, or trimmed until just before it's going to be used. For example, the outer leaves of lettuce should be left on the head and carrots should be unpeeled. On the other hand, the leafy tops of root vegetables, like those leafy tops on those carrots, they do need to be removed and discarded or used immediately. The tops could be used for stock. They contain flavor and nutrients. Chop them off. Use them, and use them or toss them. The leaves on these green vegetables absorb nutrients from the root. They increase moisture loss. They'll basically dry out your your fruit or your vegetable. Vegetables that need to ripen, such as tomatoes and avocados, should be stored at room temperature, about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the produce is ripe, you can refrigerate it uh, to keep it from becoming overripe uh, or eat it. I go with eating. Even with proper storage, most food service operations do not keep produce for more than how many? Four days. Some vegetables, such as onions and beets, have a longer shelf life, but Restaurants limit the storage of these items. They, they do. Even if they last for a really long time, three weeks is a pretty standard rule of thumb. Green vegetables must be placed carefully in a refrigerator. Remember, the refrigerator has cold and warm spots. Uh, don't put your green leafy romaine lettuce in a spot of the refrigerator that's extra cold. It'll go bad. And that's bad. Vegetables must be properly prepared before they're cooked. Preliminary preparations might include cleaning, peeling, slicing, dicing, chopping, or mincing. But the one we want to talk about, the one that we care about the most, is cleaning. All fresh vegetables, even if they will be peeled before cutting, must be cleaned thoroughly. Washing removes surface dirt as well as bacteria and other contaminants. Leafy vegetables contain sand and dirt and can even contain bugs. Gross. Celery and leeks are always dirty at the root. To clean vegetables, run them under water that is a little warmer than the produce. A little warmer than the produce. When cleaning leafy greens such as lettuce and spinach, remove the outer leaves, pull the lettuce and spinach completely apart, and rinse it thoroughly. As with fruit, special solutions are available for cleaning vegetables. Well, you know, wash your vegetables as close to preparation time as possible. When cutting vegetables, the cutting surface should be at a comfortable height so that your elbows are in a natural position, right? 
We've talked about this. It's best to set up a cutting station with one container to hold the peelings and another container to hold the cut vegetables. Why? This allows you to safely cut on a clean cutting board. It should be large enough to accommodate piles of chopped material while you're still going at it. It should be securely in place with a washcloth or a damp paper towel underneath and not move as you're chopping. Place an approved rubber mat underneath the cutting board or use a slip-resistant surface. You know, it's the best practice to use different colored cutting boards for meat, fish, poultry, and produce to minimize the potential for cross-contamination. Make sure the vegetables do not touch surfaces that are exposed to raw meat, seafood, or poultry because that's cross-contamination and you know better. And that's it. Our vegetable journey has come to an end. We've gone over so much. We've talked about so much. Um, I hope you've had a good time exploring some of these different varieties. I'll tell you, there is nothing more fun for a cook than finding a new vegetable to try. I remember the first time I tried um, the purple asparagus, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Uh, I hope you get that experience soon. Try a new vegetable. See what you think. I hope this was helpful for you. Until next time, I'll see you in the kitchen.